So treasurer position, we have Ms. Mishkowski is retiring on the 16th, officially. Yes. And then we need to decide what to do in the interim. We appointed an interim treasurer, but we need to have some help in the offices because we appointed the interim person to be the, the help person to be the interim person. So Mr. Nixon, you went out to the state contract and- Right. So there's a couple of things. So uh, you wanted to uh, find out how much Ms. Zuzko would uh, um, uh, expect as the interim treasurer and looking at the uh, classification plan for that position. The step one would be $23.41 an hour. She's currently earning $20.29 uh, per hour at the top of her assistant uh, treasurer's position. So she would become an exempt employee. She'd be earning uh, $3.20 an hour, um, more per hour um, until April 15th, when that's the day after the next election. The election will decide a lot of things for us. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to do a check-in to make sure that that's uh, an appropriate pay scale for the interim treasurer position and also to comment that anybody coming into the position, whether it be Ms. Zusko or somebody else, would we would expect to be paying them as a step one for that position. So that that would be the twenty three point forty one per hour. Is that how it works with the elected positions? You start at the first step if you if you're new to the, the that is that is your uh, ex that would be the best thing to do. But that's not necessarily how it's happened in the past. How's that set? Uh, this is just a qu this is just a question. General question. General question. Because <laughs> we don't appoint the person; the person's elected. If right. we appoint the person, the select board would set the pay scale. Is is there something in our rules and? It's actually set by annual meet by town meeting. Just say right. town meeting right. sets it by it's, voting it's not the final board. Right. Correct. But then right. how do they get? Okay. So how where do they start out? Yeah, we we present the budget. Whatever town meeting. Presented. Whatever their well, budget and it's is, not and an hourly. people have it's not an hourly. what they yeah. feel. It's a salary. Well, you, you have to you have to assign an hourly rate because this this is a benefited position. Um, so there, for mm -hmm. lots of different reasons, you have to have an hourly rate. Uh, it would be in our best interest to have that person start out as step one. And then they theoretically would have the authority. Because we're well, separating the salary and the expenses. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I guess they could always propose in their in their budget that comes to us, so they make more, and right. we yeah. can vote it up or down. And right. Town meeting is the so that's really how. It and works. in theory, they okay. could they could make an amendment on the town meeting floor if they if they want if they so good. desired. It's happened People before. That's yeah. happened before. No. 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 You're you're presented prevented under Massachusetts law an elected official to get up and talk about their current salary. So they could get up and say that they wanted the position at the next election to go to such and such a raise. But not but their current not one. Not their current. Okay. And then again, you're not really allowed to actually increase a budget at town meeting. You're, you can only decrease it, correct? They'd be looking at, uh, they'd be in the elected position to speak on it before we present the, the May numbers that would be voted on a town meeting. Yeah. I mean, they would be in the position a few weeks to, to make that, that input. And that would start July 1st. Okay, so I got my question answered. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Anybody else have any questions? So Con Connie is currently earning $31.91 uh, per hour. How many hours? Uh, for six, seven hours per day. And is that what's really? Uh, That's what's budgeted. Seven. So the elected, uh, uh, this confuses me because the elected official doesn't have any set number right, of hours. Right, right. It's, uh, it's exempt position uh, and an elected person. So we break it down to a certain amount per hour, but they don't need to work that number of hours and they still get their full That's salary. Right. 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 Theoretically, somebody could come in for an hour and go home. They yes. not commit at all. They could go, go fishing for a month. No. So whether we make this a full 20 or a 40 or a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is a, perhaps merits a longer discussion. Yeah. 
That's what the committee will. So we'll go to the committee. Maybe they'll talk about it. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> okay. So um, there are 66 working days between January 16th and uh, April 14th, the date of the election. Town treasurer position is funded at uh, seven hours per day. Cost room for the interim uh, treasurer uh, would be uh, $10,815.42. By comparison, Chikani would earn for that same period $14,742.42. So you about a $4,000 difference between pay there. So we would be saving $4,000 for that 66 day period. Um, we're currently looking for a, uh, a temporary uh, worker to take over for the assistant treasurer position. We've had uh, one application um, and the rate that is being quoted to us is $20 an hour plus an additional $7.70 per hour, that which is the agency fee that would be 2770. So for that theoretically 66 days, uh, at six hours a day for Joan's position, we'd be spending um, $10,969.20. Uh, Joan would normally uh, earn about $8,000 for that uh, same uh, period because she's paid at a lower rate. The difference of nearly $3,000 would be covered by the $4,000 of savings in the, <coughs> in the treasurer's rate of pay. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of savings there, but we do get somebody in uh, who we haven't interviewed yet uh, to uh, cover for Joan's assistant treasurer position who would be able to handle the HR work that's currently being done. So we could plug the gap, so to speak for the period between now and the, uh, the elections. So can you tell us a little more about the company? That the company is, um, I contacted uh, Johnson and Hill over in Northampton, uh, and they connected me to a company called the Resource Connection Incorporated. Uh, they are on the state bid. So their rate of pay has gone through the bid process already at the state level. So uh, we would be uh, getting the best value, maybe not necessarily the best price, but the best value for this agency for temporary help. So can we get a little, well, we actually don't need to make a decision tonight. Right, right. Can we get some more information about the company and the person through, uh, because this is a, a company that actually provides financial people or people with financial background to mm -hmm. do this? Well, it's a, it's a general staffing agency, so you can apply for, for anything. administrative uh, help, you can apply for purchasing help. You can, we've gotten paralegals, we've gotten secretaries. Yeah, but some people. From them? On a temporary basis. Right. But can, can I just go? And maybe I'm not remembering this right. I thought at our last meeting we said we were going to hold off and that we were going to decide what skill sets we needed before we went out for a temporary person. But you, you, the job's already been posted? I, uh, I took the job description and, uh, and gave it to the temporary agency. I think we, actually, we did ask for what the price range would be. I think that's where it went from where we, yeah. that's how we got to where we are, I think. Because the other, the other thing with um, the, not necessarily to be avoided, but you know, when you go out through an agency like this, the markup on it's like, I think 50% or something like that. So their, the agency is taking their cut, and the individual is actually getting a much so smaller the, amount. The individual here is getting twenty dollars, and the agency is getting seven dollars and seventy cents per hour. which is lower than what, you know, in private practice, if we did the same thing, the markup's that much higher, so that's probably the state, the state bid. bid piece yeah. of it. So I think, from my standpoint, I just like to know a little more about the person than anybody yeah, else want to. But don't we also have to, what Molly touched on, sit down and figure out exactly what we want? Well, we sure. need another person in that. Well, we yeah, I think everybody agrees on that. Right, everybody agrees on that, but what do we have 
for right now, it's only temporary. <coughs> right now, it's That's the same why. qualifications we use as when we hired Joan. Okay, so it's clear to everyone exactly what that person job will entail here. And is that the best for that office? <coughs> That's, I think that's what Molly's asking. Yeah, I mean, when I think about what Joan has been doing, she's clearly been right. doing the payroll and the, the benefits mm -hmm. you know, piece of it. Um, so is she then going to be doing, you know, interacting with David Eisenthal and, and doing the other things that Connie was doing? Um, could we look at even outsourcing the payroll? I mean, it just seems like there are other things that we could look at here before we just bring in somebody. And I think I think there's a couple of things here. First of all, we have not met the one person who has applied. Mm -hmm. We're going to be interviewing on Friday. If we don't look, think this person is appropriate, we obviously come up with a different way of uh, skinning this particular cat. But we have a, we're going to have a real shortage in, of human power. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a short time until the uh, elections. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a different game plan based upon what the voters approve after the election. So there's, and then there's a longer term thing which we were talking about in terms of do we need a finance director, do we need an HR person, do we need a combined position or not. Uh, all of that needs to be worked out as a larger strategy. So I think there's an immediate issue which we can have resolved at your next meeting. I'm not asking you to make a decision uh, tonight on the temporary person uh, because we just haven't had the chance to, to talk to this person um, but then there's uh, how do we get to the uh, end of the fiscal year with this uh, particular uh, budget and then how do we make a, a longer term uh, decision about how we do the work so is, is Joan involved in, in the interviews the interview process yeah. Yeah. Can we get a copy of the what you sent to the sure. agency to, tomorrow? Then. Okay. I mean, I, I heard what you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I, I I heard what you just framed out, David, and I, I understand where you're coming from. But it's just when I read this, it looked to me like a course of action had already been taken that we had approved or discussed at our last meeting, and so. It just seemed like there was an interim step that got missed, which was maybe coming coming back to the select board and making sure that you had the opportunity to say all of that, and then we'd say, "Yeah, that makes sense," and then you do it. I think you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I just it's just what struck me. How does that work in the accountant's office? Or you How does that fit in? The um, what we what we've done is we've um, taken. Uh, the 10 hours that uh, Janice Kangas works for the select board, although she's stationed in the assessor's office, and we've transferred her over to the uh, okay. accountant. So she's now working 10 hours a week for the accountant. Okay, so, so this new person won't be. Right, so we've, back we've severed, mm -hmm. severed that uh, connection. All right. Um, then the six hours a day is just in the treasurer's office? That's right. Is that what it was before, six yeah. hours a day of assistance? Oh, I didn't realize it was so little and that was really going to be. So it's 30 hours there and 10 hours here for 40 hours total oh. for Joan's position. So David, you took your current step structure and just went 2% on. Is that what you did? Uh, no, I've, I haven't changed that. that well, that's step. what it looks like here. Because we still haven't had a wage study. We still haven't had any of this work done on the employees. This is the current wage strip right now, isn't it? That's right, yeah, the one that's good. I, I know, I know, but he also put in the, the steps for all the employees, and I just wondered how that was structured. Oh, this here? Oh, yeah. Page that says estimated okay. 2% COLA. Oh, that's a, that's a statement uh, that established that um, increase are, for FY15. That's off your original numbers. Though. No, that was something you decided as a select board in oh, 13 or 14. That's what I'm saying. The existing numbers is what you want. Yeah, but we're in 15 now. So I, I know, I know. 
No, this is for 50. Yeah. Estimated at 50%. Okay, so we're going to get a copy of the job description. Give, give you a job description and as well as the, the information that I gave to uh, Johnson and Hill. Um, we'll have the interview. We'll have the report at the next meeting. Um, hopefully we'll have this person in place in order to support John when Johnny's not here. Yeah, if we actually go this route, we're not committed to staying with it for the whole time. If we decide we're going to start pushing some things out or think we want to push some things out, we can do that as time goes on during mm -hmm. this process. It's like we're a staffing agency. It is. Mm -hmm. So the only it's other thing that you said is that uh, we'll be paying a vendor out of the payroll line and that'll create tax compliance issues. So we're going to have to make an adjustment in the 15 um, budget for the um, for the treasurer's uh, office at the end Between of the Between the two, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other questions? Any other questions here? Comments here? We'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's uh, time bond.